too bad. We wanted to film a remote forest fire monitoring system, and it's raining. At least there's one good aspect. The Swedish fire brigade has time for once to go up onto the mountain where the Germans are working. It's foggy. The radio tower is scarcely visible. The Swedish technician tells us he installed what he called cameras yesterday. The German company head says they're optical sensors, not cameras. Now the Swedish worker has to climb up again to deal with a cable. Your preparation here was absolutely perfect. Good, good. Ah. Uh, the white cable is intended for plus. The white is for plus, yeah. okay. Inside the container, the system's already up and running. The local fire officer sees only fog, but that doesn't matter. The sensors can detect wavelengths invisible to the human eye. This system uh, detects smoke clouds, very, very small smoke clouds, 10 to 10 meters in 10 kilometer distance. And uh, if this smoke clouds is detected, then the uh, alert goes to the operators. The operators in moment the technician has mounted a cable to act as a lightning conductor. But because the monitoring system is so closely fitted to a steel tower, it's not really necessary. The sensors are protected from lightning by the mast. So the cable can be removed. This is a pilot facility for Sweden. The area is a peat bog. Fires can start very quickly here, but not today. Today, only measurements are being sent to Germany. In Germany, we see how the system works. At a control center south of Berlin, we're told there have been a third fewer forest fires since they've had the sensors. A fire is detected somewhere. We can't see the smoke, but the system reveals its presence exactly via the optical sensors and image processing. When an alert is triggered, local firefighters can reach the source quickly because they know precisely where they have to go. It's hard to believe what we call robots these days. We're at the company's headquarters in Berlin taking a look at the laboratory. These crates will be sent to Russia and Australia. It doesn't look like much, but this is a new use for a device patented for the space industry and originally intended to measure sunlight. It's an export hit that brings in 5 million euros profit annually. And now the company has the commission from Sweden where they want to curtail the expensive procedure of monitoring forests by plane. We're not told what it costs, whether it's in five or six figures. Even if it's expensive, it's well worth it. These days, insurance companies estimate a burned hectare of forest costs between three and 17,000 euros, just one hectare. Investing in this early detection system costs about four euros a hectare. Back in Sweden, our camera seems to be suffering from the damp, but up on the mast, everything's okay. The Swedish fire officer is still skeptical. Uh, how is it possible to detect a fire in the night, mm -hmm. a smoke in the night? In the night, the smoke cloud is illuminated by the light of the fire. But this is a near infrared range. You cannot see the fire. But the sensor is so sensitivity that uh, the uh, little bit light from the fire is enough to detect the smoke cloud. This kind of early detection means forest firefighters should be able to spend less time monitoring by air and more actually fighting fires before they spread.